Um, I guess Jim Cornette came in with the Midnight Express. Ah, and... That's a great story. Uh, my territory was down. You know, because you get in the trees and you can't see the forest. So I called my friend Jerry Jarrett and I asked him and Lawler, I said, why don't you guys come over and just watch one of my TV shows and tell me what's wrong? Because generally, I could go in a place I knew and pick it apart. I used to go in and pick out, go into Georgia. Ole would call me or Jim Barnett would call me and I'd go into Georgia, which I own part of. Right. And I'd see what Ole was doing wrong and I could get him back on track. It wasn't because you're trying, so sometimes you're missing it. So, so, uh, uh, Lawler and Jarrett came to the TV taping at the Shre at the Irishman Neal Boys Club in Shreveport, and they watched the taping. And then they came in after the words, and I said, well, let's go get an ID. What do you think? And they said, where's all the blowjobs? I said, what? Blowjobs? Let the boys take care of that. That's not what I brought you over here. I want to go eat, and I want you all to tell me what's the matter with my territory. And he said, where's all the blowjobs? I said, I'm missing it. He said, Bill, you've got the toughest athletes here. You're down to your hardcore base of fans, but there's nobody that's bringing the young girls. And where the young girls are, the young guys are. To have a healthy mix, you gotta have a mixture. And you don't have it. You got all, you got Hacksaw Duggan, you got JYD, you got DBIC, you got Dr. Death, you got Hercules Hernandez, you got guys that could whip everybody out here. Right. But you don't, so, I said, oh, God, I want to come over. He said, why don't we work a trade? Why don't you come over and look at some of my talent, and I'll look at some of your talent. So I went to Memphis, and he had a young guy named Jim Cornette, and I was just mesmerized by him. And, and he was, then he had a, uh, Bobby Eaton was in one match, and Dennis Condry was in another match. They weren't even teamed. And Jarrett said, would you take this Cornette with, for me? He said, I want to keep Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, uh, oh, the manager that was uh, so. Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart. He said, I want to keep him. I need to get rid of Cornette. <laughs> and he said, and, and I don't have anything for Eaton and, and, and this other guy to do. I said, you, you'll give me them? He said, yep. And uh, then I was, we were talking about Stan Lane and his partner, who were the, who were the blondes that were doing, were doing so. Fabulous ones. Kern and Ali. Yeah, and I want, was really interested in them, but he wouldn't let me have them. But he had uh, Morton and Gibson doing nothing, and he gave me them. That was the greatest trip I'd ever taken. And then he came <laughs> over, and I think he picked out of my group Rick Rude, who was was a young rookie at the time, and somebody else, and he took them. Well, we took the videos and came and put we put Cornette and Condry and them together and made the the, the Midnight Express. I mean the uh, you guys remember the Rock and Roll Express. Rock and Roll Express was was uh, Ricky and Robert, but then uh, the Midnight Express was Cornette and them. Right. And I'm telling you, we electrified this place. And plus, he had a little bitty Booker over there named Bill Dundee, and he didn't have a place for Dundee. And so I made a deal with Dundee to come over and help me with a book, except I wouldn't let him wrestle, because Dundee's got the greatest ego in the world, and he, he wanted to beat Andre the Giant when he's <laughs> less, less than six feet tall himself. But he had the most fertile mind. All right. And we had a run that was unreal. And Dundee was phenomenal, and of course Jimmy Cornette was mind-boggling, and, and, and Bobby Eaton. What could you say about Bobby Eaton? He could awesome. do it all. And then and Condry Fit, and then Ricky Morton. <laughs> Hoot Gibson, or, or Robert Gibson, was good, but Robert was just okay. Ricky Morton could make any match. Right. And so we had these guys, and that was like we had the icing on the cake. And we could do all the stuff we needed to do, and we blew this thing open, and the teeny boppers and everybody were coming, and we still had the tough guys. So I had to be careful how I booked them or book them with guys that would work with them. Right. And uh, Did Magnum come in? Yeah, we had Magnum, and we, we converted Magnum. We dressed him up and started getting him an image and everything else, and, uh, and, and, and he, was an, he was a fine kid, and, uh, and we had him for a while, but then he left and went to the Carolinas and was doing good there. And so, uh, yeah, we, we, we just blew the doors off here. And the Fantastics came in? Fantastics, we tried to follow Rick. They could never follow Ricky and, right. and Robert. They were good, but they couldn't take it to the level of, 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 of what we're, you, you don't have that many Ricky Mortons. Ricky right. Morton. An awesome baby face. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he can do it all. Uh, there's a lot of guys that can do the mechanics, but don't have the feel for the match. And there's a big, big difference. Like, for instance, Ted DiBiase. I called him my catalyst. I wanted him in any match. Ted DiBiase by himself would never draw the biggest bucks in the business. But Ted DiBiase in the match always made the match. Duggan is a kind of guy that could draw money, but Duggan 
could get so screwed up he's not working with the guys right. I had a hell of an angle here one time with DBIC and Duggan that was a classic, the best dressed man angle. And, and every town town it's going and it was going down. And I went and watched, and then I saw why, and I had to chew Duggan's ass. He's guzzling DiBiase. And DiBiase's not going to fight Duggan for getting his own part of the match. DiBiase's going to go along with it, but it's killing the towns. Right. But then as far as Hart, you wanted a guy like Duggan. I mean, he split his head on a, speared his own head in Houston, where it penetrated the skull with this damn turnbuckle. He goes to the hospital, sew it up. He never missed a show, and finally his wife calls me and said, I don't know if he can make it tonight. He can't even shut his eyes. I said, why? He said, his head is so swollen and it's all puffy. I said, he's got blood poisoning. Get him to the hospital. And, but Duggan, if Duggan, with his way, he'd make it if it was going through fire. All right. So you had guys that, that believed in making it. Matter of fact, my rule here was, I don't care if you get in a fight out in public. If you lose, you're fired. Right. So if a guy got, came here and got in a fight, one guy did, a top hand, and I fired his ass. I looked at his hands. And I said, you didn't throw any punches. You were a catcher, not a hitter. You're fired. You were definitely one of the first promotions to uh, use music videos and uh, women in professional wrestling. Well, Jarrett, Jarrett was doing it, right. too. Jerry Jarrett, I, I'm going to tell you, Jerry Jarrett's a brilliant guy. And, and I, I, I think a bad thing is that Jerry uh, and I didn't spend more time with each other because we really had a great rapport together. Jerry was just very insecure sometimes and would read things the wrong way. But, he's, but he'll be the first to tell you that. Jerry called me years later after one deal. He was telling everybody I stole uh, Cornette and all that talent from him instead of him begging me to take them. Uh -huh which is the truth is he begged me to take him. He later called me and said, I don't know what happened or why I did that. So I, I still have nothing but respect for Jerry Jarrett. And he, he was living in that Nashville area, and he started messing with the videos and stuff. We just brought it here and took it to another level, and, and Joel was very ta my son Joel was very talented at putting that stuff together and editing it. And, uh, but we'd been, I'd also learned uh, back into, into, into editing footage <laughs> under Eddie Graham in Florida with uh, with with the old film footage that was just a lot harder than doing it by by videotape 